Uh, so I found a bunch of like new style of questions from, hello Mar, how are you? From kind of older papers that you might not have seen before. So this is technically old spec, but it's all the same maths, but it's different styles of question, which I thought could be quite useful for you. Um, I do remember the kind of topics you asked me for. Hey Evie, how are you? Um, but I figured we'd do some kind of different style of questions to try and like, you know, throw you off course a little bit because you guys are pretty strong. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well, doing pretty well. I had a bunch of classes cancel on me, um, which might sound bad, but it means I have to rest. Dying maths mock so soon. <laughs> I know, but I'm sure you guys are going to do fine. You'll be fine. Fine. And even if you aren't, at least then you'll know which topics you struggle with and you can practice those. So either way, it's a good thing. 100% not too shabby. Not too shabby. Still scared. You'll be fine. Uh, actually, there is something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, the kind of maths department at my school put together a few predicted papers as well. So I could actually do a few of those on stream too. So that could be quite interesting. Um, the style of question is kind of weird though, which might be a good thing. It might throw you off a little bit. But for today, we've just got a bunch of kind of different styles of questions. Um, and again, I got these from fairly old past papers, which I'm, I'm fairly certain you haven't gone back to like 2013 before. Uh, so this is kind of interesting, they're from a slightly... Again, the maths all stays the same, but it kind of throws you off a little bit. Your mock is next Wednesday. Okay, best of luck. Best of luck. Okay, so let's get started. So we have point P has coordinates 5, 7, and we have point M is 1, 2.5. M is the midpoint of the line P, Q. So Q is going to be somewhere, let's say, down here. And all we need to do is work out the coordinates. There are two ways to do it. One way is kind of using the actual formula for the midpoint, which is the fact that you add the two x coordinates together, so x1 plus x2, and divide it by 2. And then you also do the same thing here. However, there is a slightly, in my opinion, easier way. All you have to do is, if you look at the x coordinates for the midpoint and point P, there's a difference of 4, which means there should also be a difference of 4 from this one. Can you take P from M? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. So if you look at x, it goes from 1 to f uh, 5. That's a difference of 4. So I'll write that down just to make it slightly easier. So all we're going to do is, for Q, you'd also have to add 4 to the X value. So the X coordinate is definitely uh, subtract 4 from 1, which is negative 3. Okay, so all we have to do there is subtract 4. A difference of 4, yeah. So the reason why it'll also be a difference of 4 is because the midpoint, right, is directly between P and Q, right? Which means it should have the same distance between each other. So what that means is if you add 4 to the X coordinate, you'd have to add 4 to the X coordinate from Q as well. The other way to do this, by the way, is you can also make like a big triangle and you know that the distance will be the same, but that's a bit, bit more complicated. Yeah, no worries. Um, with the y value, we can do the exact same. So what do we add to 2.5 to get 7? Uh, it's 4.5. So what we're going to do is subtract 4.5, which would be negative 2. Yeah, negative 2. Nice and easy, and that's the coordinates for Q. Two more question. Yeah. Starting off relatively okay, but there's a question later on I think might be interesting. Circle theorem question. This one I also thought was quite interesting. It is a non-calculator question. Uh, so the circle shows a circle inside a square. A, B, C, D is a square of side 10 centimetres, so all these sides are 10 centimetres. Work out the total area of the shaded regions in terms of pi. So when you look at this, you might think straight away that the shaded region is just going to be the square, subtract the circle. And you'd be 100% correct. That's exactly what you need to do. So the square is quite easy, right? Since all the sides are 10 centimetres, then we can just do 10 times 10, and that'll be it. Now, what about the area of the circle, though? That that bit was slightly trickier. I'm wondering if anyone's uh, seen that yet. Um, again, it's not it's not like super difficult, but it might be tricky to see. So, if you have a look, 25 pi is correct. Radius of 5. 10 is the diameter. Well done. So 10 is the whole width of the circle, so the radius would be 5. So all of you are correct. So you're just subtracting pi r squared, so pi times 5 
squared. So all you're doing is doing 100 minus 25 pi. And we can't simplify that any further. So that is the answer. Nice and quick. Three mark question, not too bad. Perfect. Box plots. So I find that the statistics side of your GCSE is generally neglected by your schools. So this might be slightly trickier for you. So we have a box plot, it gives information about the wages of a group of 16 year old workers and 18 year old workers. If you'd like me to quickly go through what a box plot is, then let me know. Um, but yeah, with the compare the distribution, you get, okay, never mind, I didn't actually write it out. You get, basically, you need to do two points, okay? When you compare distributions, the two things you're comparing is the spread. This is where you get your marks, and average. Good, good, good. Okay. Both of you are getting, you're both correct, yeah. <clears throat> so, you need to compare the spread, and yes, interquartile range, well done, okay. So with the spread, some students uh, use the range. The range is not the best uh, measure of spread, okay. The interquartile range is better because it's taken into account like 75% of the values, which is a lot better. So yeah, you're going to be comparing the interquartile range and in this case, the median. And this will give you three marks always, but you can do it in as few steps as humanly possible. So with the interquartile range, you need to calculate it. In fact, this was four marks, because you need to work out the IQR. So we need to read it off. So again, this is the lower quartile, that's the upper quartile. So the range is, um, the problem with the range is it takes into account extreme values, right? So with the range, I look at this value and this value. The problem is, if you look at how far away this range is, that's a big difference. In this box plot here, that's 75% of the values, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the interquartile range takes into account 75% um, of the values, right? Because this is the bottom 25%, this is the top 75%. Fair enough. Um, so the, the upper quartile takes into account three quarters, right? And this is one quarter. I see what you mean, actually, yeah. What I what I meant to say is that it goes up to three quarters of the values, but you're right, if you subtract them, then it'd be 50% um, of the values. But the idea, yeah, it is split into 25%. I see what you mean now. Um, I think I worded that wrong. The interquartile range takes into account 50% of the values, but the interquartile range is uh, three quarters, yeah. You're correct, Evie. Perfect. So yeah, all you need to do is work out the interquartile range. So for me, that's quite easy. So I think it goes up in 205. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, so it goes up in fives. So this would be 210. Subtract, that would be 130, which is 80 pounds. And the interquartile range for these dudes over here is 280. Minus 210, which is 70. So yeah, the 16 year old workers have a larger spread of data. So you would just write 16 year olds. And the 18 year olds have a higher average which in this case is the median. Uh, is this the salary or? No, wage, okay. Okay. So yeah, all you have to do is compare the spread, so the interquartile range, and the uh, median. So the reason why the interquartile range is better is that it doesn't take into account extreme values. So if we look here, the, act the higher values are quite far away from the majority of the data. So it's, it might not be an outlier per se, but it's not really fair if one person's earning 300, like, what was that, 380 pounds, whereas most people are earning around this amount of money. 
So that's why the interquartile range is better, generally speaking. Yeah. Now, it says here, there are 200 workers who are 16 years old. Work out an estimate for the number of these workers whose wage is uh, £130 or more. So I'm just going to write 200 people. And if we look at 130, that is... Actually, let me get rid of this quickly. That is this value here. So if you notice, that's the lower quartile. So how would I work out the number, like an estimate for the number of people who earn above £130? For this, you just need to know what the lower quartile represents. But I'm interested to see if any of you... No. Quarter of 200? I see why you got that. I see why you think that. It's not qu You're on the right lines, but not quite. So remember, it's more than that. So how many people earn more? I know how, but can't type. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard to type it out. So, yeah. For the number of these workers whose wages are £130 or more. So as Ma said, this lower quarter represents a quarter of the people. So a quarter of the people earn below £130. So three quarters earn above £130. So all you're going to do is do three quarters of 200. So one quarter of 200 is 50 so times by three is 150 people. Does that make sense? Because that was a bit, bit wonky. Zero point two five times y is two hundred. Good. Okay. This next question. The reason why I was quite excited when I saw it. Oh yeah, you are close, Mark. You probably would have got one mark. Not, not two. It's 25% of value. Yeah, perfect. With this next question, I haven't seen it in a while, which makes me wonder if they're going to bring back this style of circle theorem question this year. Maybe. Potentially. But uh, I do think it's a relatively interesting question. Have any of you seen something like this before? To be honest, if you've done a question that looks like this, you'll know exactly how to do it. Which is cheating. I'm joking, but don't say. All right, how about this? I'll give you a little bit of time to have a think about what you would do. It's a bit tricky, I'm not going to lie. It's a five mark question, by the way. Five marks. So expect to do three steps, because again, you need to give a reason for each stage of your working out. So you get some marks for the reason. Remember, if you don't give reasons, uh, they will just give you zero, even if you get the right answer. So... Bear in mind that. I'll give you a little bit of time. Is anyone completely lost? If you are, that's completely fine because this is a tricky question. I think I have an idea of what to do, yeah? Angles in a segment, interesting. You can use angles in a segment, potentially. Then you make an angle subtended. Interesting. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not saying anything. Do you draw a triangle from the line? Do you mean from... I'm not saying anything, Evie. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. What do you mean by that, Ma? Do you mean from P to O or from like P to R or M to T? I mean, I have to give some hint. From the point O, draw a line straight down. Isn't there already a line straight down? As in from O to, to where? Or is it not on one of the points? I think I finally found a question that you guys are struggling with. Finally, all it took was going back to 2012. <laughs> 11 years ago. 
from O to P. OSP is OS48, yeah? I mean, it gives you that. Find the O from 180 and then double it to make the new system. I'm liking this. Oh, ah, interesting. It's an interesting move, Lila, interesting move. I'm not giving anything away because I think Evie will uh, rip my head off. So I'm just going to stay quiet for a little bit. I want to say that you guys are doing very intelligent things. Even if they aren't right, they're intelligent things, and I like that. Have a think about what circle theorems you can see already. Drawing from O to M, you could, you could. I would find it with the piece. Honestly, you probably would. Yeah. Ooh. I'm. I'm not gonna lie. If you had it in front of you, it might be a bit easier. A ninety degree angle. Interesting. Oh, okay. I think I can see where you're coming from. I think one of you said alternate segment theorem. That's interesting. Potentially get you somewhere. I feel like I need to start writing soon. Mm -hmm. Ma, that is something you could definitely do. <laughs> okay, I think I should start. RSP equals SPM. Uh, not quite. Okay. Ma, you're correct. That is one way to do it. So I, I actually would have done it a slightly different way. Okay, I'm going to start going through. This is the way I did, right? But two of you said alternate segment theorem, and that actually makes a lot more sense. So you can see that this line OS is a radius and this is a tangent. So they would overall meet at 90 degrees. So then if you do 90 minus 48, you do get 42 degrees. And alternate segment theorem would say that this would then have to be 42 degrees as well. That was clever. I actually did it or I would have done it in a slightly different way. So when I looked at this question just now, what I was looking at is if I draw a line from O to P, which is what I thought you meant initially, Ma. Yeah, exactly, you can get that. These these uh, lengths are the same because they're also the radius, which means this angle here is also 48 degrees. Because remember, the base angles in a triangle, an isosceles triangle is the same. I thought that's what you meant. That's why I was like, from where? From O to R, O to S? But oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, damn, you guys did not bad. And then you just work out what this angle is, which would be um, 84 degrees. And then angles subtended at the center are twice at the radius, so you'd also get 42 degrees. Both of which are completely fine. So I was happy with that. You also know that this side has to be 90 degrees, right? But we're only looking for this angle here. So what I would have done is I would have drawn another line from O to M, which that's kind of bad but what it does is it can it cuts this angle in half so this angle here is 21 this angle here is also 21 so then all you're doing is doing 90 minus 21 to get your final answer of 69 degrees so either way you did it you would have got that so i should probably write out the reasonings because this is a bit messy right Yeah. E either way would have been fine. I did. I did hope that. So I'm thinking that they might actually do something like this 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 year. I think. Um. Whoops. Also, actually, there's a question I wanted to ask you guys. Um, which example are you doing for English? 
You can. I can <laughs> no. I mean, I would if I could. But. Yeah. AQA. Okay. AQA. Blood. <gasps> I might have a present for you guys. Basically, I. I have this structure. Become your English tutor. Well, you say that. I have a um, a year eleven student on Wednesdays, and uh, basically, we went through a kind of structure for their language paper one and paper two, and she managed to get very high on her mock grades. So I might share that in like a video or something. Yeah, you haven't been taught circle theorems. Jesus Christ! All right. You need to check your spec, by the way, because there's probably quite a lot they haven't told you. So there's some statistic stuff I'm willing to bet they haven't done. Um, just yet. The man of many talents. What can I say? But yeah, I might do it in like a video or something. I've been taught like everything. Yeah, that sucks. That royally sucks. Oh, well. But yeah, okay. It's good that you... Okay. So what I'll do then is, I don't know if I'll do it as a live stream maybe, they're nerfing you. <laughs> they are, they need to hold you back, they can't get you that 100% you know. I don't know if I'll do this as like a live lesson or I'll just record it as like a video. But either one, I actually have uh, I have, a, I have structures for basically um, question one through five for paper one and paper two. And the student did pretty well and she said it was because of the structure. I don't know, but either way, I'll um, make that video. Am I good at English? I think I'm okay. I think I'm pretty good at it. English literature is harder for me because I there are so many different books they can give you um, that the ones I studied at school and the ones I like tutored might not be the same ones as you guys. Like there, there's so many different ones. Like of mice and men and in, and and Inspector Calls, I'm fine with. Um, Macbeth is okay as well, but that's an English mutually exclusive. I don't know, man. I read a lot of books, so I don't know if that helped me with English or something. Like, the quality of your English is a big part of, like, GCC English, shockingly, I know. The rest of it's memory, and I'm quite good at memory. Oh, man, Lord of the Flies. Yeah, see, I haven't actually even read the book, Lord of the Flies, so... I might have to, I'd have to read that if I wanted to try and teach you it. I love literature, it's just that there's so many different books they can give you, it's a bit tricky to keep up with it. You will not revise it? Oh come on, Evie. You can't just focus on what you're good at. Read it if you want to fall asleep. I feel like... No, that's Heart of Darkness, something I've never mind. Yeah, well. Until I get your nine. Exactly. So, what I can do then. But the thing is, English language, that's universal. That's the same for everyone, pretty much. So, I could upload some stuff on English language, too. Literature, you might be on your own on that one, not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll be able to. Uh, I don't know how many books I can read. I could probably share resources and stuff, but other than that. Okay, uh, honestly, given how quickly you guys got the circle one, I think this four marker might be a bit of a softball for you. It might be a bit easy. But, uh, I got conned by someone on TikTok for English language help. Oh, did you pay like a tutor or something? You mean to do this one? I'm assuming you mean the maths one, right? Do this one, okay. Um, but yeah, the English video, I'll, I'll make one. I'll make two, well, two, technically. You bought a structure. People pay for them? <laughs> Damn. Oh, okay. Well, the one I'm going to give you is going to be free, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll go through it in the video to, like, to do it properly. Okay. That's good. I actually kind of got a creator's block recently where I wasn't sure what kind of videos to make. So that's given me a bit of hope. I can make some English language vi videos in the meantime. I'll make one for paper one and one for paper two, and if it's useful, and I won't charge you for it. <laughs> okay, so with this one, if you ever see do physics videos, I should definitely get on. 
That's actually a really good point. Hang on. Let me just... I feel like this is like my lesson instead of your lesson at this point. Okay. Anyways, um, physics is my jam. I love physics so much. Oh. Anyways, so whenever you see these two parallel lines like this, you should be thinking of Z, F, and C angles, but bear in mind you can't call them that in the exam. So although I'm saying Z, F, and C angles, never call them that in the exam. They're called alternate angles, corresponding angles, and co-interior angles, respectively. Make sure you refer to them by their proper names. So, if I look here, can you see that D to E to A to B looks like a big Z, right? So whenever you're unsure of um, what to do in these kinds of questions, just start working out angles. But I can quite easily say that this is 54 degrees. And again, what I'd write is 54 degrees because alternate angles. And yeah, I probably shouldn't have capitalized it, but you know, whatever. YOLO, right? Okay. The next one is one that doesn't really come up that often. But basically, if you make an X with two straight lines, then their opposite angles are actually equal to each other. Like this. Okay. And what this is called is vertically opposite angles. So you might not have seen, it doesn't really come up that often. But it is technically on your spec, which again is why I think they might try and throw it at you this year. Now, you might be thinking vertically opposite, but it's also the horizontal ones. I know the naming sucks, but yeah. So can you see here, this is just made, this X kind of shape is made up of the same two lines. So that means this angle here is 70 degrees because of vertically opposite angles again. So, so far you would get, you would get two marks, right? For working at this angle and this angle and a reason, okay? So now, I can work out this angle, right? And that would be my third mark. Why? Because angles in a triangle add up to 180. So this one here is just 180 minus 70 minus. Let me know if I'm going too quickly, by the way. There's a bit of a delay on the chat, so I can't actually tell when you guys want me to stop and talk. So 180 minus 70 is 110. Minus 50 would be 160, so that would be 156. I'm an idiot. Did I really say 156? 56 degrees. All right. Okay. <laughs> 56 degrees, not 156. Cool. And then for the final mark, all you have to do is say that X is equal to 180 minus 56, which is 124, because angles on a straight line add up to 180. So if you don't give a reason for any part of that working out, you drop the mark. Okay, so even if you're right, you drop it. So again, this is just angles on a straight line. So angles in a triangle, angles on a straight line, vertically opposite, alternate angles. It's a lot of writing, but it is four marks, so I guess it's kind of expected. Okay, cool. Any questions about that at all? Perfect. Good. Perfect, yeah. Is X 124? Yeah, X is 124. Oh, hello, Alia. How are you? I hope that, that was okay. So yeah, four marks is a bit beefy, but when it does say, um, give a reason for each stage of your working, a common question I get is, do I have to? <laughs> the answer is yes. Every single stage, you need to give a justification for it, which is unfortunate, but you know, now this one, yeah, <laughs> this one looked fun. It's a full marker, which I did just have to check. Evie, you're on it. There we are, not bad. So the first thing you want to do is work out the total interior angles. So what I mean by this, is this is what the angles in a shape add up to. And the formula is n minus 2 times 180, where n is the number of sides. How many sides are in a pentagon? 5. 5 minus 2? 3. 
times 180, 540 degrees. Good, I'm glad. This formula, so with this formula, whenever I ask students like in schools or in tuition, they, they don't recognize it and they say they've never seen it. Now, of course, some of the time they've just forgotten, but sometimes they've just never taught it. This comes in clutch sometimes. Not always, it's not, it, the thing is, so with like the GCSE and everything, since there's so much content, your school's not gonna finish all of it. So the bits that don't come up that much, they skip. But this is a four mark question, which you can't do without this. It's impossible. So, yeah. So because it's a regular shape, exactly, it's a God formula. Only things your teacher taught. Well, there you go, at least they did something, right? If it's regular, it means all of the sides and angles are the same. So each one of these angles here are going to be 540 divided by five, which is 108 degrees. If you're wondering how I did that, I just divided it by 10 and then doubled it. Divide by 10 is 54, double it is 108. Um, I can't remember if this was a calculator paper or not, so I'm just gonna assume it isn't. Uh, yep. So, now here's gonna be the interesting thing, right? This overall angle is 108 degrees. This tiny part inside here oh, is going to be half that. Anyone unsure why? Actually, I didn't even explain it. This is a line of symmetry, which means it should bisect the angles that it goes through. Just like it bisects the sides it goes through. That's why the inside bit's 54. Just for anyone that was wondering. Okay. Now this angle here is 90 degrees. Why? Because when you draw a line of, sorry, a line of symmetry, any angles it goes through, it bisects. So it cuts them in half. Any sides it goes through, it, um, it bisects. Does it have to be symmetrical to assume that? Yes, because it, the only reason why, okay. I'll ask Eve, uh, answer Eva's questions first. So the reason why I can do this is because they tell me it's a line of best, it, it's a line of symmetry. That's why I know it cuts it in half. That's why I know it has to be symmetrical. If these weren't lines of symmetry, I wouldn't be able to do that. And Ma, to answer your question, Evie already did. It means to cut something in half. The only way you can cut something in half is at a 90 degree angle. So they're perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular, meet at 90 degrees, bisect to cut in two or to cut in half. That's a really good question. So if it looks like a line of symmetry, can you assume? Unfortunately, in maths, just because something looks like it's something, you, you can't assume it. No, never assume. If they don't tell you, or it's like implied because of circle theorems or something like that, you can't assume. How do you get the right angle? Good question. So with a line of, uh, God, I keep calling it a line of best fit. With a line of symmetry, any sides it goes through, it's going to perpendicularly bisect. So it's going to meet at 90 degrees. That's why. It has to cut it in half, which means it meets at 90 degrees. 180 over two as it's a straight line. Yeah. If it's a circle theorem, then yeah, you can, because it will tell you like um, radii and tangents meet at 90 degrees. So they might not show you it's 90 degrees, but they'll tell you it's a tangent and you can see if it's a radius. That's what I mean by using circle theorems. But in general, you can't assume things because of this thing up here, diagram not accurately drawn, which means even if they draw it looking like a 90 degree or looking like it's symmetrical, doesn't mean it is. So they have to tell you basically. Absolutely, Evie, I can. Well, I can try to anyway. Okay, the reason why I'm doing all this, by the way, is when I first looked at this question, I didn't know what to do if I'm making a confession. So I've started working out stuff, and from there, I can see what I need to do now. I'm going to work out this angle here. And that angle, uh, let's just call it X. Oh, uh, no, don't call it X. Let's call it Y. 
is the third angle in a triangle. So I'm going to do 180, God, minus 90, minus 54. 180 minus 90 is 90, minus 54 is 36 degrees. Now the reason why I worked that out is because of the vertically opposite angles. So if you look, this is an X shape made from two straight lines. Hello bucket. Yep, 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 yep. you're all getting it correct. Then what I need to do is I know that this angle up here is going to be the exact same as X. So what I can do is I can do 360 minus 36. And yeah, hello bucket, how are you? Minus 36 again to minus 72, which would be 188. Right? Yes. Uh, so Bucket, what we're doing is I've, I've actually collected a bunch of different questions that were quite tricky. So I'm going through just a selection of different questions. So it's not actually a specific paper, if that makes sense. Well, 180 minus Y, much less effort. That is very true, Evie. <laughs> oh yeah, because angle's on a straight line. Yeah. You're right, that's actually easier. And then divide by two, um, which is 94 degrees. Which is our answer. No worries, Bucket. I have an eye, yeah. Well, apparently I don't. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. It's a four mark question, um, a bit involved. What Evie said is actually easier. So if you look, it's just a straight line. So you could just do, you know, angles on a straight line add up to 180. That's a very good point. Any questions at all? So I thought this was a fairly unique question, in my opinion, you know, fairly different. So I thought it was worth going through. Okay. Um, unique in a bad way. Uh, yeah, in a bad way. Uh, Lila, uh, yeah, I'd say so. What I'd have, if you, it's been a couple of months since I've taught chemistry, to be honest. Um, because I don't really have any science pupils anymore, but I used to be able to do them very well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I can explain things decently well. I don't think I'm like smarter than anyone or anything else like that though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next question then. This one is another interesting one. I thought. So it's a it's a humble four marker, uh, just like we've been doing for the past while. You have to work out what X is. Doesn't seem too tricky, right? Some kind of glitch in the matrix. Uh, these are higher questions, Bucket. Although there is a bit of overlap. This question specifically is definitely a higher question. So Katoa, interesting. Well done, Bucket. Damn. Well done, Bucket. <laughs> Not bad at all. Um, so yeah, uh, you're 100% correct. Well done. I thought that'd take a bit longer. So Evie, you're uh, sorry, Lila, you're correct. Sokotoa, and then you can use uh, you're going to use Sokotoa in order to find out what the angle is. But as Bucket pointed out we need to know one other side in order to work out an angle using trig. So, we can use the sine rule. Wait. Oh, okay, I think I see what you mean. Oh, I see, yeah. That works as well, Evie, yeah. So you could use it as like, yeah, not, not quite Pythagoras bucket, but that was a valiant effort. The intended solution is to use the sine rule. Yeah, no worries, no worries. The intended solution is to use the sine rule, but Evie's pointed something out, which is fairly interesting. You could make this one big right angle triangle and use trig to work out what this angle is and subtract 30. Yeah. Although it wouldn't be 17.6. It'd be 10.4 plus 5.2, which is 15.2. 15.6. Yeah, there are two ways to do this then, yeah. 
So the way that Evie's talking about is if you make it one big triangle. It's uh, 10.4 plus 5.2, which is 15.6. This is very clever. And 18. So what you can do is work out this angle and then just subtract 30 from it to get X, which is 100% valid. 100% valid. How do you even do sine rule for this? Where's the angle you need for DC? Um, what you would do... Yeah, I mean, that might take a bit more... So, the way I, the reason why I said um, sine rule is I'd use the sine rule to work out this angle, and this angle would just be 180 minus that angle, and then we can just work out x from there, right? Oh uh, yeah, Mark, I can do that, absolutely. We'll finish in a second. Um, Evie's way is probably the easiest. So there's the sine rule, there are two ways. You can work out this length and then do that, but that takes a bit longer. I was going to work out this angle, work out this angle, just doing 180 minus it, then just doing 180 minus 90 minus that angle. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I'll bow my head. I think that this is the easier way to do it. You are. You're actually doing a much better job than I am. So since it's O and H, we're going to use so. So we're going to use sine Y equals opposite 15.6 over 18. Put you in the face cam. Oh man, I should do that actually. I'll just have a screenshot of like your name and just shove you in the bottom right instead. Uh, I do have, this is obviously a calculator question because it's trig. Um, all that, so inverse sine uh, 15.6 over 18. That's 60 point blah, blah, blah. And then if we, X is just going to be whatever that is, minus 30. It's actually kind of interesting that it's basically the same number, but yeah. 30.1 degrees, let's make it. Your dream is a maths question about you. <laughs> interesting. Uh, okay. And how many more questions did I get? I think I got way too many questions, by the way. Easy Ed Excel maths paper. Relatable. Very relatable. How many questions, how many more did I get? Oh, God. All right, yeah. I may have gotten a few too many. <laughs> um, considering we only have, okay, we have, we have 20 minutes, that's fine. Let's go a bit faster. So, I'm not marking this year, no. Not as far as I'm aware. Reverse cosine rule. The problem with that, Lila, is you need to have a third side. Yeah. So this is the angle we want to work out. You can call it X or whatever the hell you want to call it. They've given me that the area is 18. So what we can use is we can use area equals a half AB sine C. A and B are just the two sides that make up whatever your angle C is. So we can work out what the angle is from there, and we can use that to you work out the other one. <laughs> what is here? Nice. So 18 equals half, seven times eight, sine C. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit before we continue. So that'd be half times eight, which is four times seven, which is 28. Don't know why that took me a bit of time, but you know. So C is just going to be the inverse sine 18 over 28. Let's. So let's just change this. Oh, okay, that is, so this thing here is just, I just call it the area formula. Where does the half go? Yeah. Why is it inverse sine? Okay, I skipped a step. So the half, I actually just worked out what a half times seven times eight is, EV. So a half times eight is four, four times seven is 28. In terms of why is it inverse sine, if I continue from over here, I divide both sides by 28. 
And then to get rid of the sine, I just did inverse sine. It is to find the angle, yeah, well done bucket. So yeah, that's where I got that from. 7 times 8 is 28, yeah. <laughs> no worries. I probably shouldn't skip steps. That is pretty much just 40 degrees exactly. So I'm just going to leave it as 40 degrees. Okay. And what we can do from there is I'm going to use the sine rule to work out x. But before I do that, I need to work out either this side or this angle. This angle is much easier because otherwise I have to use the cosine rule. And I'm okay with that. No, thank you. So 180... Oh, I'm an idiot. Never mind, I can't do that. <laughs> Oops. So I have to do I have to do the other way. So we have two sides. We have an angle. I'm just gonna make sure I know what we have. God. Yeah. So we can use the yeah the cosine rule. Yeah. God. All right. So the cosine rule is we're going to label this A, B, and C, and this is capital A. So A squared equals B squared plus C squared. This is a very involved question. I'm hoping I haven't done something uh, too tedious. Oh boy, all right. Why did I pick angle A, B, C to be sine C? Uh, yeah. So, um, okay, so I'll answer Mars question first. I didn't, the reason why I chose this to be angle C is because the formula half A, B, sine C, you have to use two sides and the angle between them. So the only sides we have are 7 and 8. So it has to be this angle here. A bucket, to answer your, your question, um, they haven't actually told, as far as I'm aware, they haven't told us that you're getting a formula sheet in general. But it is normally at the beginning of the um, uh, exam paper. So, but they, they specifically told us a couple months ago that they try to remind us that you don't have to get a formula sheet in the exam and they made the point very very clear oh, okay oh perfect Ma. thank you yeah okay good never mind then you get it on the formula sheet <laughs> um, but yeah they made it earlier how did you label the sides A, B and C okay so the way I labeled the sides is, I with the cosine rule, the side that I want is always lowercase a. Always. That means the angle has to be capital A. Has to be. B and C, it doesn't matter which way around you put it. I could have just moved them around. And it would be the same thing. Right, because you're only adding and timesing them, so the order doesn't matter. The only ones that matter are A. No problem. Otherwise, you have to memorize all the different versions and screw that. You don't need to. You never need to. Okay, so uh, we have 7 squared plus 8 squared. God, it's so much harder to use a calculator on a keyboard. Uh, cos 40, at the click cos. 27, and then, okay, I'll write that out quickly, but. Then we're just taking the square root because we don't want the side squared, of course. 5.22, so it wants it to three significant figures, so I'm going to leave it to 5.22. Yeah. My phone, if I rotate the calculator, it just gives me a scientific one. Yeah, like if I open my phone to the calculator, I can turn it to the right and I can do like sine, cos, square roots, etc. Which is, which is handy, yeah. Um, 
Okay. Damn, this question... Oh, it's six marks. Whoops. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. So you would get two marks for this first bit, two marks for this second bit, and you get two marks for the last bit. The last bit is you'd have to use the sign rule. So in terms of the sign rule, again, it doesn't really matter which way you label it. The only thing that matters is that capital A is opposite lowercase a, capital B is, low, is opposite lowercase b, and so on. Other than that, it doesn't matter. Okay? Um, oh, dear God, I just... Okay, that's 5.22, okay? So we can use we can call it whatever we want, right? So if you want, I'll keep the labeling that this is a, which means this is a. The other side, it doesn't matter. I'm going to call it b and b, right? Well, this is technically going to be x. So what that will look like... I'm going to move this down a bit, and I'm going to do the new working out up there because I don't want to confuse you guys. The sign rule just says that, depending on what you're working out, that is extremely specific, Lila, but yeah, uh, we'll have to do it next, probably next lesson, but I'll, I'll write that down, I'll add it to the list of questions. June 2019, paper three, AQA. Oh, question 27, that would help. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, in this case, we have sine 40 over 5.22, right? Because A is 40, that is 5.22. Uh, I'll have time to answer something uh, somewhat small, yeah. Um, B is, sorry, and then sine X, God, I'm... Losing my marbles, okay, over eight, right? Just for those two. So if I times both sides by eight, I'm going to get sine x equals eight sine 40 over 5.22, and then all I do is I inverse sine both sides. And then we need to do it to three significant figures. Okay. So, inverse sine that. Okay, I'm in degrees mode, good. And that would be 80.1 to three significant figures. That is a six mark question. Not bad. <laughs> Pretty chunky question, not gonna lie. But, honestly, this is kind of the perfect question. Because in terms of advanced trig, you use everything. You use the area of a triangle formula, use the cosine rule formula, and use the sine rule formula. That's literally all of advanced trig. <laughs> so that's actually like the perfect grade six question, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. When I was going through, I was like, there's no way this is a four mark question. And then, yeah, six marks makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> a lot of sense. Okay. We'll do one more question, then we'll take the questions from you guys. Oh, it looks like I really cropped this badly. Whoops. Well, you know. I always aim to impress. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. So. I know, honestly. Okay, this question is four marks. Okay, that's a bit more human. So again, if you have two parallel lines like this, you're always thinking of Z, F, and C angles, but again, never, ever, ever call them Z, F, or C angles. Ever. Never call them that. You call them alternate, corresponding, and co-interior. Otherwise, you'll get no marks. Okay? So, F, B, C... Is 70, good. So, as Bucket said, yeah, as Bucket said, this is going to be a Z angle. BFC it's, Yeah, well done. Very good. You're just doing it faster than I can. <laughs> 
Interesting. That's actually not the way I was going to do it. I was going to do it this way. Uh, fair enough, yeah. Both these are isosceles, 70 degrees. Well done. Not bad at all. If anyone didn't keep up with that. So again, you need to do the reasonings, right? So the first thing you do is you'd say um, FBC or CBF, whatever, the, whatever you want to call it, is 70 degrees. Reason, alternate angles are equal. Okay, why is this 70 degrees? Why is BFC 70 degrees? Base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal.